This broke last night. Arizona grand jury indicts Donald Trump allies 11 fake electors. An Arizona grand jury has indicted former Donald Trump chief of staff Mark Meadows and lawyer Rudy Giuliani, along with 16 others. This was an AP article republished by the Huffington Post. An Arizona grand jury has indicted former President Donald Trump's chief of staff Mark Meadows, lawyer Rudy Giuliani, and 16 others for their efforts to use so-called fake electors to try to overturn Trump's loss to Joe Biden in the 2020 presidential election. The indictment released Wednesday named 11 Republicans who submitted a document to Congress falsely declaring that Trump won Arizona in 2020, including the former state party chair, a 2022 U.S. Senate candidate, and two sitting state lawmakers. They're charged with nine counts each of conspiracy, fraud, and forgery. The identities of seven other defendants, including Giuliani and Meadows, were not immediately released because they had not yet been served with the charges. Trump, who is described in the indictment as an unindicted co-conspirator, has argued that he can't be prosecuted for acts he committed while serving as president. The U.S. Supreme Court on Thursday will hear arguments on his bid to avoid federal prosecution over his efforts to reverse his loss. So it's possible he might be charged here is what that sounds like, right? Because he's got this case pending before the Supreme Court. So it sounds like if they rule against him, which maybe they will, maybe they won't, there could be a charge against Trump here too, potentially. That's what it sounds like to me. Again, I'm no lawyer. I'm just a simple podcaster. I'm just a, uh, I'm, I'm just a simple country yeah, podcaster. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so don't take my word for it, but that's what it sounds like to me. With the indictments, Arizona becomes the fourth state where allies of the former president have been charged with using false or unproven claims about voter fraud related to the election. Heading into a likely November rematch with Biden, Trump continues to spread lies about the last election that are echoed by many of his supporters. I will not allow American democracy to be undermined, Democratic State Attorney General Chris Mays said in a video released by her office. It's too important. So here she is, uh, Chris Mays. We're going to play her statement. And this is really disappointing to see from Chris Mays because we just made friends with Chris Mays. We just covered uh, her in uh, the last show. You know, she is uh, leading the charge to try and uh, press charges against uh, the um, real page, which is the AI software that's rigging the housing market there. So she was doing a great job. We were fans. And now she goes ahead and she, she turns on our favorite president. You know, she turns on our, our dear leader, uh, which is not good. Believe me, not good. It's very unfair. But let's, we, let's hear we, her we, out. We, 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 we didn't make a single sexist or misogynistic joke about her. No. But that's about to change. That's about to change. Right. Why don't you stick to going after the real criminals, landlords, right? Yes. And leave our favorite president, who, oddly enough, was a landlord himself at a time. But we won't pay attention to that at the moment because no. we're in the tank for Trump. Right. So let's let's hear her out. Hi, I'm Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays. Let me start by thanking everyone for your patience as we conducted a thorough and professional investigation over the past 13 months into the fake elector scheme in our state. I understand for some of you today didn't come fast enough, and I know I'll be criticized by others for conducting this investigation at all. But as I have stated before and will say here again today, I will not allow American democracy to be undermined. It's too important. The investigators and attorneys assigned to this case took the necessary time to thoroughly piece together the details of the events that began nearly four years ago. They followed the facts where they led, and I'm very proud of the work they've done to date. We're here because justice demands an answer to the efforts that the defendants and other unindicted co-conspirators allegedly took to undermine the will of Arizona's voters during the 2020 presidential election. Arizona's election was free and fair. The people of Arizona elected President Biden. Unwilling to accept this fact, the defendants charged by the state grand jury allegedly schemed to prevent the lawful transfer of the presidency. Whatever their reasoning was, the plot to violate the law must be answered for, and I was elected to uphold the law of this state. The scheme, had it succeeded, would have deprived Arizona's voters of their right to have their votes counted for their chosen president it effectively would have made their right to vote meaningless. Well, Whoa. there you have it. 
um, you know, democracy, if you feel democracy is that important, um, I, I think somebody needs to inform her that you have two political parties that are completely unaccountable to the public, one of which actually went into court and argued its own lack of accountability to the public. And they, through their power and influence, have made it virtually impossible for anyone to challenge their candidates, which are chosen in a, in a very undemocratic way that they are not in any way accountable to the voters for uh, that selection. So um, I think you're a little late, ma'am, to the saving democracy uh, boat. The idea that the outcome of that process is in any way democratic is in and of itself a joke. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, look, we'll look more into this case in the coming days and perhaps do some follow-up uh, segments on it. Like I said, this broke late last night. Um, but as you can see, this is another prosecution of Trump's team. And like I said, according to that article, it sounded like the door is open to another indictment against Trump himself sure. if the uh, Supreme Court case doesn't go his way. Um, this is another maneuver. I mean, you're seeing the effect of this lawfare. The Daily Beast ran an article last week, which if there weren't a million things going on last week, we would have gotten to. And we might still get to it because it's it's kind of evergreen. Um, but the thesis of the article, like as like, sn you know, snottily written as it was, because it's the Daily Beast. So they're writing this in like an encouraging tone. They're saying that Trump's legal problems are starting to hurt him in the race because he can't fundraise. He can't rally. He's out of the public eye. The trial right. itself isn't televised, so he's not even getting any FaceTime with the American right. people. Right. Um, he's just disappeared. He's stuck in right. a courtroom. Yep. And now, even if he doesn't end up indicted as a result of this, this is still a massive propaganda campaign that gets to run on in the state of Arizona, a critical swing state. He's got charges against him in Georgia, another critical swing state where a lot of these anti-Trump narratives are going to be in the news because of these cases. Georgia, Pennsylvania, Arizona are the big three. You could probably add Michigan to that list now because of the Arab and Muslim leaders. Now, the advantage Trump has, Trump only needs to win two of those four. If you go Arizona, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Trump needs two of those, Biden needs three of those. So Trump is still the favorite in a fair fight, but as you can see from these last two segments, it's not a fair fight. It's not going to be a fair fight. <laughs> like they're going to keep coming and coming right. and coming. Right. And now it gets to a point where when Biden starts to rise in the polls and he's inching up in the polls, he's not surging because he's not doing anything to earn support. But you're, you're choking the other candidate out of the race. Right. Exactly. And when you have now just a little over six months left, if Trump is stuck in a courtroom for another month, you're talking about Trump losing 20% of the time that Biden has, right? You get another one of these trials going. You get, you know, more court cases going. He could have, very, I mean, it's not inconceivable to think that Trump is going to have 30% the campaign time that Biden has. So Biden gets to run right. almost double the campaign that Trump gets to run, right. right? That makes a difference because that affects your fundraising. It affects... You know, your mm -hmm. time on the ground rallying, which is where you get, you know, volunteers signed up. Right. Um, you know, these things add up and in a close race and Biden was always I mean, Trump had been favored to win for a while, but it was never going to be a landslide. It was always going to be a fairly tight race in a close mm -hmm. race. These things make a big difference. These make things make a big difference when you sideline a candidate and you have the closest swing states in the country going after pardon me, the candidate and his allies to the point where it's going to be in the news on a constant basis on local media in, you know, Arizona and Georgia, which are these two crucial swing states. Yeah, man, like they they could be primed to knock him out to the point where like what seemed inconceivable three months ago to me, which is can Biden actually squeak this out? It's not inconceivable at this point. Now, Russell has maintained from day one that the giant asterisk next to this whole 2024 issue is are they going to simply make it impossible for him to win? And right. so 
Russell's probably not as taken aback as uh, by this as I am. Um, but yeah, it seems like uh, maybe it's not time for a full victory lap, but it's certainly uh, looking like you were on to something because if this keeps up at this rate, you're only going to see half of a Trump campaign. You're not going to be able to see a full campaign. This is, you know, I mean, it's funny because you have a lot of, you know, Trump supporters whenever I have said this have absolutely said, no way, look at the polls, look at the polls. But if you ask them, hey, so do you think the system is rigged? Absolutely. Okay. Well, which one of these things doesn't go with the other? If the system is that rigged, why on earth? Did you think they were going to let Donald Trump be the president? And then, and then if you bring that up, they'll say, oh, well, the country will go crazy. You think they care? You think, right. they, go ahead, give them an excuse to test out all the military hardware they've given to local police forces over the last several decades. Go ahead. Give right. them a chance. Go ahead. Let, let the, let, give, give them a reason to roll the tanks out. Um, they don't give a fuck. They're going to do what they're going to do. I have said this throughout. If they let Donald Trump be president, I would have to reevaluate my belief, my entire belief system about how this country works. I, it, as far as I understand this country, there is no way they let that man be president. No way. They by hook or by crook or by extraordinary means, shall we say, extraordinary rendition to the angels. Well, right. uh, that that's we'll call it that. They will not let that guy be president. That 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 has been my opinion throughout. And yeah, they'd rather deal with it this way because of what they're saying. Oh, the country will explode. It's easier for them to do it this way, just a slow lawfare grind, right. than you know an accident. Right. Exactly. Just kind of like smother the campaign to the point right. where it 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 is overcome by you know a very weak incumbent that can actually like do the blocking and tackling of running a presidential campaign. There are still a lot of democratic partisans. Trump has very high negatives and it's going to be close. It it is going to be a tight one. It's going to come down and the other big question mark and you know uh is um do these do these abandoned Biden voters really stick it out, right? Because there's going to be a lot of propaganda and a lot of oh come on, we know you're upset, but you got to fall in line. Like you know, some of these people I take at their word. You know, you talk about Dearborn, Michigan. You're talking about people who have lost family members in Gaza. Like I trust them to hold the line. But everybody else beyond that, at the end of the day, man, you're talking about fucking Democrats. Like, these are the weakest, most spineless people in America. True. There's nothing a TV ad can't convince them of at the last minute. And so that's another question mark going in. Sure, sure. Um, I, 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 well, I think, I mean, on your side of the, uh, of the ledger, the idea that they swap out Biden, I, I could definitely see that happening, too. Like, I could definitely yeah. see by the time you get to November, it's it's not even Trump and Biden. Yeah. I mean, that was what Tucker said. He said it's not going to be Trump or Biden. And it seems like there are certain wheels in motion. Like, it really does. Like, it, it's a very eerie. There's a very eerie feeling in the air this week with this war funding and the TikTok ban. And all of a sudden, these Democrats and it's Republicans are talking world. nice again. Like, they're, they're, not, they're being nice to each other again mm -hmm. over right. war. Over something no one wants. Like, that's how you know you're in an authoritarian system. Like, the Democrats and Republicans are talking each other up this week, not because they did something that everybody wants. Like, it's one thing if you come together to pass something that has broad bipartisan support, like, I don't know, paid family leave, right, <laughs> or universal pre-K. No, you come together to send $60 billion to an unwinnable war that's getting people killed left and right, and they're, oh, this is an example, Ro Khanna. This is the, this is the example of the system working. Yeah, right. Scary shit. Really scary shit. Please clap. <laughs>